song very well. fired up welcome back physically on zoom we all know you were catching up with uh, the the youtube so however i just said tefillah b'shem kol yisrael b'shem kol yisrael for all the people that need a refuah physically mentally spiritually for whatever reason specifically pesach for uvin ben yosef asara bracha bas yehudis and everyone from one end of the world to the other, every single person, including ourselves. Master of the world, you alone know the true depths of our plight in this generation. The desperate plight of the Jewish people as a whole and of every single Jew individually. We are all hungry yearning, longing, hoping, and waiting to come truly close to you. Everyone who knows the wounds of his heart is longing and waiting for the true healer and leader who will bring him closer and heal the sickness and pain of his soul. Bezrat Hashem, may we all be Zoka to be healers, to be the best doctors in the world, and to prescribe the right medicine for every single person, the vitamin S's of the world, the vitamin J's of the world, not the vitamin D's. However, we know what the vitamins are. I have a whole pharmacy of them in my, in my apartment. Whole pharmacy. A whole thing going on. Does everyone know? Vitamin S is vitamin Shabbos pills. If anyone needs those, geschmack. Vitamin J, vitamin joy. And vitamin D, I'm never prescribing to any patient. It's vitamin depression pills. Never, ever, ever. Oh, geschmack. So everyone is wondering, specifically James Kislasi, when should we light candles? Jack, it's not a vitamin. It's a, it's a bacteria. <laughs> oh, it's a bacteria. That's even deeper. Before you actually begin lighting the candles, you recite the bracha, the hadlik ner shel chanukah. Some leave out the word shell. Followed by Nisim Shasa uh, Nisim on the first night, you also add Shechianu. After kindling the first light, you begin saying and singing Haneros Halalu. Right, we all know the Zisha song. As you are lighting the other candles, you don't need to wait until you are done lighting all of the candles to say it. On the other hand, you sing Ma'ot Sor. Only after having finished lighting all of your candles. That's a beautiful halakha. We just learned how to light our menorah and when to do it, the proper times to sing, to say the words, geshmaka, geshmaka, when to wait, when not to wait. However, we're, we're still talking about the miraglim. We're still talking about the miraglim. We're still talking about how, how we should have the eyes of Hanukkah. The ayin tov. So our holy rabbis, we all know, say that the most important thing you have to work on is ayin tova, to have good eyes. What does it mean to have good eyes? Our first question.
question. What does it mean to have good eyes? The eyes have such a power, Hebra. I could look at a person who stutters all of his life, and if I look at him without an eye in Tova, he'll be stuttering. But if I look at him with an eye in Tova, he'll be speaking beautifully. This is the deepest, deepest concept. Literally, the deepest concept. You could look at the ugliest person in the world and view them as the most beautiful person in the world. There's a million Torahs. I'm just thinking about Simcha right now. If we smile at someone else, that person will smile. That person could be in such a bad state on the outside, looking like he's on vitamin Ds or bacteria Ds. And just by giving him the vitamin Js, by giving him the joy, that person will experience joy. But if we're looking at that person like he's disgusting, like he's depressed and sad, I will be affected. And that person will continue to sink lower and lower in the depths. Finkelstein, I'm going to mute you for a second. Unfortunately, some teachers have terrible eyes. They don't look at their students with positive ones, with positive eyesight. With 2020 vision, with my eyes, I can take everything from you. True, I cannot take away your ears or your nose, but I can take away far more. Far more. Or what relates to the eyes the most? So this is another question. What does it mean to have good eyes? And what relates to the eyes the most? Beauty. I can look at you, and because of how I look at you, you could be convinced that you have the ugliest face in the world, right? It's like looking at someone like they're depressed. You can make them feel depressed. But with an eye in Tova, with a good eye, Kevra, you see beauty. I can look at a person with an ugly face, but if I look at him with an eye in Tova, he can feel like the most beautiful person in the world. Kevra, let that stick in. It's... These are my, every word that we're going over right now is the deepest. It is the secret of Hanukkah. It's the secret. Mama the deepest depths. And now we all have to open up our hearts 10 times deeper. They were open before, but now we have to open them 15,000 miles deeper. This is one of Rabbi Nachman's most deepest teachings in the world. What happened to the spies when they went into the Holy Land? They came back and said it was a terrible country. Even though we eventually went into the Holy Land, because of the Meraglim, we ended up in exile. Because of the Meraglim, Hebra, we had trouble with the Greeks. On Hanukkah, we are initiating the third Holy Temple by fixing our own eyes. Everything looks beautiful. Everything is shining, Hebra. When something looks like mamish beautiful to you, it becomes even more beautiful. This is why in Hanukkah, you have to be in Israel. You have to be in the base of Migdash. All the holidays happen outside of Israel. Pesach in Egypt, Perm in, the, in, in Persia, Sukkot in the desert, Shavuos is also in the desert. On Hanukkah, we were in Israel. It is the only one that happened in Israel. Rabbi Nachman says in the Kutei Maran that you have to draw the holiness of the Beit HaMikdash into yourself and fix the blemish, the brokenness, which was caused by the spies. We have to fix our eyes. On Hanukkah, we can. It is 1,000% possible, and it will happen. We can get back our dreams like we mentioned the first time. Our faces become alive with our dreams. Now we can do action. Through our dreams, we'll develop Nain Tova, Mizrat Hashem. Everyone will be beautiful. Everyone will not be shining. If you have our questions, comments, please feel free. We just learned the deepest depths. Really, no words. So uh, I'll say that this Torah also reminded me of. Uh... Reish Pei Bet and the Gutei Moran, the idea of the Ayin Tova. Um, 
And I was also thinking that I learned something new yesterday or the other day. Someone taught me this. Um, when I told him about where Rav Nachman says about Kola Olam Kolo Gesher Tzar Maod. Maybe it was Nitei. Um, so think about walking on a bridge. If you only walk on a bridge, you walk on a tightrope. The narrow bridge, if you walk on a tightrope with one eye closed, you fall off the bridge. <laughs> it's so narrow. If you only use one eye, if you can't perceive the depth, the difference between looking at something with one eye and two eyes is that with one eye, you can't perceive depth. With two eyes, you're able to have a, a more complete uh, vision. And this idea of, of keeping two eyes open, it also relates to tefillin because like your two eyes, the vein that connects both of the eyes goes right over here where the tefillin shorosh sits. So where do you reveal Hashem? How do you see the light of Hanukkah? How do you see that candle? You see it in between the space. You see it by connecting both of your eyes. It's not only about looking at something on a surface level. We have two eyes to teach us that we have to look and we have to look again. The holy, uh, simple Rebbe, Jacob Hershkowitz, he says that uh, it said when Avram saw the Malachim, it says that Avram saw twice. If you look at the passage, it says that Avram saw the three men. He lifted his eyes and he saw the three men and then he saw them coming and then he went and ran. So what does it mean he saw twice? It means that the first time he saw, like we all see on a surface level, but it says one more time to show that we need to use both of our eyes and we need to really perceive that, that depth in the world. So if anyone wants to know the deepness of the inner space, just contact Farka. Other questions, comments, please feel free. And uh, if anyone does, is not familiar with Inner Space, it's a book, Kabbalah, from Ravari Kaplan. Parker knows it in and out. <laughs> Kishmak the Ayan Tova. Kishmak. Everyone's taking our, everyone's texted our Holy Rebbe. Wait, 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 wait. Samson, you know you have the deepest background in the world. It's the deepest background in the world. It's literally blocking out everything, and the only thing you're focused on is the other person. Nothing else matters. You're just using your eyes. You're locking in. You're mamish locking in to us. It's amazing. And if you think that's a Zoom background, it's not a Zoom background. It's just the light surrounding Moshe where it actually became that. Okay, okay. So nothing else needs to be said. No. What? Samson! No, Samson, <laughs> everything needs to be said, okay? I once texted earlier, Abby. Hello, Kol Tachlit Shalom, Hula Sot Oto, Geshet Samayod. Little translation is it not the entire purpose of the whole world to make it to make it the world a very narrow bridge? The Torah of Nachman with Yeshua Tzamerod is quite tamwa. It's very confusing. What does it mean? Kol am kol Yeshua Tzamerod. This is a fact, but it's possible that 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 is not a bad thing. Rather, it's something that we should be appreciative of. 
not only that we should be appreciative of, that we should have God. Am I frozen? Can you hear me? Hello? We hear you. We hear you. Um, is that, that for something we should be appreciative of? And the fact that we give ourselves exactly as Jack said, we focus in on that which needs to be focused in on. When we say, I'm giving my attention to this exact thing, I'm going head on with this, this tsar, with this mania. Make the whole world, make your whole world, I guess, your tsar mode. Make your whole world a place where you can zone in and say, okay, I know what my, my goals are. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm coming from. I'm not scaring yourself for one second. And if we're connecting this to Hanukkah, which we know is, is, it's always Hanukkah, and we're counting down now, less than 20, I think it's 28 days or something like that, right? 20 something days. You know? We're saying to ourselves, the whole world is, the whole point is to make a Gesher Tzar Mode. You know the distance between right, left and right? It's mamish, it's like, it's nothing. The right, left and right is this, this is, this is left, right, left, right. My palm is going to the left, now my palm is right. It's no distance. So it's with the Hanukkah candles. When we're looking at the Hanukkah candles, you know the difference between, you know the difference between, oh, what's the notion? Come on. Uh, the distance between where the light is coming from to where the light is going. Almost there's no distance. Distance. Mm-hmm. Uh, the lights of Hanukkah, the Geshe Tzarmod. Whatever that means, I don't know. But it means something. It's enough already. You never social distance from Hashem. Oh, wait, it's a sticker on WhatsApp. All you guys should get it. Never do social distance from Hashem. <laughs> Zerat Hashem. <clears throat> Thank you, Samson, for pouring out your heart. Anyone else have anything to share? Kalali, Tamar, Daniel, or Daniel <laughs> from YU, Mamish. Sounding like Darth Vader, not actually. <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone should just be healthy, happy, and successful. Whether you're in YU, having trouble with the B strings, but giving me so much, or the B chord, and giving me so much motivation. Ah, the Darth himself. The Darth himself. The mom is giving me so much motivation to really embrace being uncomfortable and work on being uncomfortable. Uncomfortable is comfortable. Also, Rabbi Daniel, taking the holy life from Eretz Yisrael and literally just being a fountain. Everyone is just taking the Kedusha, the light from Rabbi Daniel, you know, just himself, but also getting a taste of Eretz Yisrael, which is Daniel. Uh, Daniel is Eretz Yisrael, like we learned tonight. Jacob Kalali, Kishmak, getting ready. A little over a month five weeks counting down. I think we need an official countdown. And Tamar obviously is guarding the borders of Am Yisrael. Tamar, are you still in Herzliya? No, I'm back um, near Amada. Oh, she left the beaches of Herzliya. Um, <laughs> guarding the beaches, Geschmack. And Samson, of course, late night. I mean, the calculations are getting harder and harder. As the day is going on, needs to be there a little bit longer overtime so you can connect stronger, more stable bridges for us to travel on, for us to get to from point A to point B. Geschmack, thank you so much, Samson. And Kavra, just have a beautiful night. Don't stop drinking coffee. Don't stop drinking tea, hot water for the soul. Kavra, we just need to warm ourselves up. Be well. Ah! Oh.